A deputy speaker of the House of Lords has resigned after being filmed apparently snorting cocaine with prostitutes. Lord Sewell, who's not affiliated to any party, has also stepped down as chairman of the Lords Privileges and Conduct Committee. The speaker of the Lords, Lady D'Souza, says she's asking Scotland Yard to investigate. Here's our Home Affairs correspondent, June Kelly. Lord Sewell, a senior figure in Parliament, although not a household name. Now he's notorious. I beg to move the first motion standing in my name on the order paper. This was the married peer and former Labour minister in the Lords ten days ago. He was a deputy speaker and head of the Lords Conduct Committee. Not anymore. He resigned today after this front page appeared, showing him allegedly snorting cocaine with prostitutes. It was part of a video released by the Sun newspaper. So you want to get some coke? Well, I mean, He's asked about parliamentary allowances. Two hundred a day. So what? What? How? That is. If the my no, work is two hundred a day to yeah. buy lunch. It's not lunch, lovey darling. It's paying for this. Well, it's bad news for Parliament. It's bad news for the House of Lords. But he needs to go. Not just resigning his position, he needs to resign, retire from the House of Lords and do so straight away. As a man with responsibility for standards in the Lords, he recently wrote, The number of members who break the House's rules is small, but the actions of a few damage our reputation. Scandals make good headlines. In the video which has been his undoing, Lord Sewell makes racist and sexist remarks about Asian women. The Speaker of the House of Lords, Baroness de Souza, responded swiftly to the revelations, describing Lord Sewell's behaviour as both shocking and unacceptable. She said these serious allegations, as she described them, would now be referred to the House of Lords Commissioner for Standards and the Metropolitan Police. In the video, Lord Sewell reportedly says that he wants to be led astray. He now moves from the front bench to the political wilderness and an investigation by Scotland Yard. June Kelly, BBC News. For a calls this morning for a lord caught on video apparently taking drugs with prostitutes to leave public life altogether. Lord Sewell has already resigned from his role as Deputy Speaker of the Lords and in charge of enforcing good standards of behaviour in the House of Lords. He'd previously helped draw up the Code of Conduct, which says peers should act with selflessness, integrity, accountability, openness, honesty and leadership. Images of Lord Sewell, naked, uh, sniffing white powder from a woman's breasts using a £5 note, were filmed by The Sun on Sunday. And there are more images of him today in the paper, wearing women's underwear and a leather jacket. The House of Lords last night reported the peer to the Metropolitan Police. Lord Soley is a former Labour MP and former chair of the Parliamentary Labour Party. He knows Lord Saul and says he's caused enormous damage and describes his behaviour as appalling and absolutely terrible. We can talk to him now in his first interview on the subject. Um, Lord Soley, thank you very much for your patience. He's resigned as Deputy Speaker of the Lords and from his role in charge of the Standards Committee. Is that enough? I think the, the problem here, it does do appalling and terrible damage to the reputation of Parliament and the reputation of Parliament must come first because after the recent scandals uh, over the last few years it is very, very important to show to the public that we deal with these matters quickly. Now I have to have a slight caveat here, this might come to the floor of the House in a vote so obviously I want to hear any defence first before I make any final judgments. I can only judge it in the sense of if this happened to me, I would be asking myself whether I wanted to stay and the answer would be no, not if it's all true. If I felt I had a defence, and this is important, I would voluntarily suspend myself from the House, ask the committee to look into it as quickly as possible and for the House to make a decision. Because I think these things need to be dealt with speedily but with justice. We don't, I mean, the, the allegations about cocaine, it's white powder, we know that, might go to the police and so on. So it's very hard to conceive of a full defence on this, but nevertheless it needs to be heard. But that is what I would do if this was, if I was in this position. And you do have to remember, just uh, an aside here, if you like, that Lord Shaw has done a lot of good over his public life. These are always personal tragedies over acts of, of course, can only be described as incredible uh, misjudgment and stupidity. Um, so that's, that's a tragedy in its own right. But the reputation of Parliament comes first, and we must put that first. 
There were new rules announced, uh, introduced actually just before the election, which means that badly behaved peers can be booted out, although they keep their title. Do you think that's right? I think in time, I mean, frankly, I would like the name of the House of Lords to be changed anyway. I think it's a slight anomaly, to put it mildly, that we still use this title. Uh, but the, the title is given by the Queen, uh, and it can't be withdrawn by the House of Lords. So it's one of the things that over time we can look at. I don't think that's critical. I think the critical factor must be the reputation of the House. If the reputation of the House is at risk, even if an individual uh, has got special circumstances or something, frankly, the reputation of the House comes first. And at this stage, on the face of it, what has it done so far to the reputation of the House of Lords? Oh, it's terrible, and it's also, uh, as I've said before, it's terrible appalling the reputation of the House, and it also damages politics because people, you know, are fed this story, which then events like this feed as well, that all politicians are on the make or doing things wrong or whatever. And that is not true. The vast majority of politicians are hardworking, and indeed, Lord Sewell, as I indicated, has done a lot in public life before. But when something like this happens, then again, if it's all true, if it's all as it is, then you, you know, if it's me, I would step down. Uh, if not, I would be asking the House to suspend me uh, for, uh, for that period of time it takes to, for me to deploy any defence that I may have and for that defence to be heard and then action to be taken. I just want to have a, a, a quick look at a little bit of the video where Lord Saul talks about the allowances for members of the House of Lords. Have a listen. Coca-Cola. Forget the cola. Well, just forget the cola. Forget the ola. So you want to get well, I mean, enjoy a little. You get two hundred days and nothing gets them Okay, so that's incredible. I know it sounds being grown by no. Two hundred a day. So what, what, how, how that is, if the no, my work is 200 a day yeah. for my lunch. It's not lunch, lovey darling, it's paying for this. Yeah, we could do with some nice little young Asian lady, I would have thought tonight, but never mind. Uh, Lord Sewell talking about the daily allowance of £200 a day, it's actually £300 a day. Um, what is that for? The allowances are £300 or 150 If you don't do a full day or you do less, it's up to the member of the house to charge less. And quite a few of us do that. It depends. You vary it according to the time we've worked and so on. It is actually a recognition that members of the House of Lords are not paid and that you get you, you don't get expenses as happened in the old days for secretaries or for houses or, or, or second homes. So there is a need for an allowance. I think the way it was described in that video is just very sad again because as you rightly point out it's not even accurate. It is three hundred pounds or one hundred and fifty pounds. And of course he did get a salary because he was Deputy Speaker of the Laws and also that, yes. also that in charge of the job and he has resigned from that. But yes, he, yes, yes. Absolutely right. I mean most members of the House of Lords do not get a salary. That's important to make that point. Mm. And also he was in charge of the Standards Committee and it was only That's a couple right. of weeks yeah. ago he was talking about the progress made in terms of standards mm -hmm. uh, in a blog post for the Huffington Post. Uh, let's have a look at this now. The House of Lords today agreed two new stronger sanctions to deal with future behaviour that breaches the code of conduct. The number of members who break the House rules, small, but the actions of a few damage our reputation. The House of Lords has come a long way since 2010 in improving its regulation of its members and punishing the small number who misbehave. Well, all of that is true, but in a way it's why I say that if this had happened to me, I would, and I felt it was all true and I had no defence at all, then I would simply step down and say, yes, I've brought uh, my career to an end in a very sad way, um, and I would step down. If I felt I had a defence, whatever that defence might be, I would say, I'm going to suspend myself from the House and ask the committee to look into it as quickly as possible and for the House to make a decision as quickly as possible, because once this allegation and stories has come out in the way that it has, then frankly the most important thing is we are seen to act and act quickly and effectively on it. Otherwise the reputation of par Parliament and of politics continues to be damaged. Thank you very much for talking to us this morning. Thank you for your time.
Thank you. That's Lord Solely. And worth saying, of course, we tried to contact uh, Lord Sewell. We invited him uh, for an interview, but we haven't heard back. A couple of messages from you, Roger, in Cambridge. Lord Sewell is, is a disgrace and should go. He should be sacked and all privileges taken away. No pension, no payoff, nothing. These people think they are above the law. If it was an ordinary man in the street doing this, he would be ridiculed uh, mercilessly. And this email says, a serious consultation should be held on this matter to gather opinion, in particular to decide the constitution of an upper house, to include who should stand there and who should be elected.